Welcome to Legacy Chiller Systems. My name is Dwayne Ribley. I'm with the Process Engineering Department. Today's video is about the process water side of a chiller, and we're going to be talking about how that works. And at the end of this, hopefully, you'll have a little bit better understanding about chillers. That's our whole goal here um, with our videos. So let's go over some chiller basics. The easiest way to think about a chiller is to think of it in two pieces or two sides. There is a process water side and there is a refrigerant gas side. The heat is picked up from the process. Then the heat is transferred over to the refrigerant side and that refrigerant side removes the heat to air or another water source. And once we get into our drawing, that's going to make a little bit more sense. But just to think of it this way, a chiller removes heat. It does not create cold. So keep that in mind, okay? Now, let's go over that drawing I was talking about. And we're going to get a really good visual on the process water side of a chiller. A piece of equipment generates heat. And what a chiller does is removes the heat. And our piece of equipment is going to generate heat around 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And that process fluid is going to be coming in around 55 to that chiller evaporator, and which is this piece right here. What the evaporator does, or some of it call a chiller barrel, is where the process water side and the refrigerant side meet, and the heat is transferred. Now, the fluid from the process never touches the refrigerant fluid. They never physically touch, but the heat is transferred. And how that works is through the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics basically is a hotter source always moves to a colder source. For that to work, our refrigerant side has to be colder than our desired leaving water temperature, which we'll get into in a minute. The refrigerant Temperature, if you look to the left of the drawing, is around 35 degrees F. So you have your 55 degree water coming into the evaporator. The refrigerant side is at 35 degrees, so that heat can transfer over from that 55 to the refrigerant side. Once that heat is transferred, it goes over to a different process and cycle, and that's in the other videos. Once that heat is removed, the evaporator will produce your 45 degree desired water temperature that's going to go back out to your process and cool your equipment. So your heat, your piece of equipment generates heat and the chiller will provide that cold fluid to it. And that pretty much sums up the process water side. My name is Dwayne. I'm with Legacy Chiller Systems. Feel free to call me or email me if you have any questions or any kind of chiller needs. Thanks.